sniping during warfare can be incredibly deadly. To be an effective sniper, you need to have a huge degree of patience, skill and trust in your ability and weapon. Some of the most well-known snipers of the Second World War would pick up hundreds of kills and would be a constant thorn in the side of many different armies. However, the deadliest German sniper after the Second World War was Matthaus Hetzenauer. He would, at the age of 21, receive the Knight's Cross for his actions during the conflict. Hetzenauer is credited with having an unbelievable 345 different kills during the conflict, serving with the 3rd Mountain Division. Join us today as we look at the deadliest German sniper of World War II, Matthaus Hetzenauer, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Matthaus Hetzenauer grew up in an alpine part of Austria and was born on the 23rd of December 1924. He was from modest beginnings, being a descendant of a long line of Austrian peasants. The rural village he was raised in was close to the German border and his family would try to live off the land as much as they could. Matthaus's father was a brilliant hunter, shooting deer, moose and turkey for all of the family to eat. Matthaus would follow in his father's footsteps and at a young age he became an adept sharpshooter. Through hunting, he learned how to best conceal himself and use his surroundings and camouflage to not give himself away and this helped him in his training as a sniper. He learned also how to trick an opponent and also how to cover ground quickly if his shot did not hit the target. This also allowed him to quickly leave an area in a tight spot, with an enemy pinning him down. At the age of 17, Hetzenauer used his hunting skills in a more deadly sense. He was drafted into the German army and was assigned to the 140th Mountain Rifle Reinforcement Battalion in Austria. In January 1943, he changed his units and received training on how to use mortars and artillery, but was trained as a mountain infantryman for two years. This role suited Hetzenauer, and during this, one of his commanders and superiors noticed his skill with a rifle. From March to July 1944, he then began his formal training as a sniper within the German army. He became adept at using two weapons in particular. He relied on the Carabiner 98K sniper variant, which was fitted with a 6x telescopic sight, this being his favourite weapon. He also carried a Gewehr 43 with a 4 times telescopic sight. With these two guns, he became one of the deadliest snipers of the Second World War at such a young age. Snipers needed to become used to their equipment and they would practice with the weapons regularly. The German army used Hetzenauer in a number of different places, mostly on the Eastern Front, as the tide of the war was turning against the Germans. He saw service in Carpathia, Hungary and Slovakia, and the Germans would use snipers to good effect as they needed to try and prevent the advancing battalions of the Soviet Red Army as much as possible as they were advancing towards Germany at breakneck speed. On the defensive, the Germans would use artillery units and different weapons such as machine guns and artillery to break up the Soviet advance. Hetzenauer was deployed in this role and he was tasked with defending mounting units from Soviet snipers and machine guns. He would need to think quick against Soviet snipers and would be gripped by a number of different sniping jewels. On a daily basis, the German mountain brigades and regiments would face constant barrages from Soviet artillery, and it would be Hetzenauer's task to try and slow down the advances. He would choose to shoot Soviet commanders and unit leaders and machine gunners. He would also sometimes work through enemy lines, shooting targets to get close to a commanding officer, to then inflict damage in the hierarchy of a unit. Sniping during World War II was often a rather slow and patient art, and it was sometimes a game of chess. Hetzenauer would bide his time, taking out lower ranks in order to get a prize shot on the commanding officers. He said, I had to shoot at an enemy's commanders and gunners because our own forces would have been too weak in numbers and ammunition without this support. As mentioned, he would have to be incredibly patient and for hours would sometimes lay in the snow and frozen terrain in camouflage before he waited for that one moment where he would get a shot away. He was very aware of his surroundings as well, knowing that he could easily give away his position with poor decisions. He also realised he could easily be hunted by a Soviet marksman. It was during his efforts on the Eastern Front 
that he would in particular make an incredibly long-range kill, hitting a target at a distance of around 1,200 yards. During his time in service with the German army, he recorded 345 confirmed kills between August 1944 and May 1945. On average, this means that he scored a kill at a rate of over one a day, and all of his kills would occur within these 10 months of service. Hetzenauer holds the record for being the most successful German sniper of the Second World War. He was the deadliest Nazi sniper, and for this was rewarded with the Iron Cross First Class and Second Class due to his impressive statistics. He was noted for having a lack of fear, and having a disregard at times for his own safety, waiting patiently for kills after he was under intense artillery fire. So as he laid prone in cover, Hetzenau would be regularly shelled and explosives would be going off all around him. He demonstrated immense bravery during these episodes. Hetzenauer also received a number of other campaign medals and awards, such as the Close Combat Bar in Gold, the Infantry Assault Badge in Silver, the Black Wound Badge, the German Cross in Gold, and the Gold Sniping Badge. Things towards the end of 1944 were bad for the Germans, with them losing a large amount of territory, and with a defeat seemingly on the horizon. Things for Matthaus Hetzenauer would also go wrong, as he suffered in November 1944, a head trauma sustained from artillery fire. He managed to recover from his head injury, but as the war came to a conclusion, he was injured yet again. He would then continue to cover the retreat of his unit towards Germany, as the Soviets stormed forward, and he was eventually captured by the Soviets in May 1945. As with many prisoners of war, who were kept inside Soviet prison camps, Hetzenau was not kept in good conditions. His life as a prisoner of war was not pleasant, with many of his fellow soldiers being killed and tortured. In total, around 3 million German soldiers were captured by the Red Army, and a huge number would end up dead. Hetzenauer spent a total of five years inside a tough Soviet prison, and the conditions were harsh, and he was finally released five years after the conflict in Europe came to an end in 1950. Very little is known as to what he did after the war, but he would return to Austria on January the 10th, 1950, and he would remain inside his hometown until he passed away at the age of 79 on the 3rd of October 2004. Matthaus Hetzenauer is the deadliest Nazi sniper of the Second World War. He was just over 100 kills short of Simo Haya, the White Death's record. Like with many snipers, the background in hunting was key for Hetzenauer's success, and during the Second World War, he managed to claim a huge number of accolades. Maybe one of his greatest successes was not the huge kill count he racked up of over 300, but instead surviving the hellish conditions of the Soviet prisoner of war camps, which had an extremely high death rate. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.